thanks everyone. My name is Bala Parthasarathi. Just to give you my brief background, I grew up in India, went to a college called IIT in, in, in uh, Chennai. Uh, and then I lived in Silicon Valley for 17 years. I've been very lucky uh, to be at the right place at the right time. Uh, and the topic today cannot be uh, better suited for me personally as my passionate topic of uh, innovation ecosystems. Uh, I was in the Silicon Valley just purely by luck at, at the right time, just before the whole software and the internet revolution took off. So I've done a number of startups there, but the one you probably know about is a company called Snapfish. Snapfish is one of the largest players in digital photos. Um, we, we, did, we did okay, we, sold, we, um, we grew the company, we sold it for a few hundred million dollars to, to Hewlett Packard. Uh, and then I ran a business in Europe uh, and Australia and uh, all over Asia, including China uh, and Japan, um, which is what brought me to India because the travel from San Francisco was a little bit too much. Um, so I moved to India in 2007. I've been here in Bangalore ever since. Um, in, uh, in early 2010, I was lucky to meet uh, Mr. Nandan Neelakeni. I think most of you know who he is. Uh, I immediately I went to his house to ask for advice. I came out of the house, put in my resignation, um, and worked for the Unique ID project, which is called Aadhaar, uh, for the next uh, two years as a volunteer. Uh, it was a great experience. And then I left and um, started a fund. The fund is called Prime Ventures, it's a venture capital fund, uh, and it was a very, very early stage of the ecosystem in India. Uh, the Indian ecosystem really took off only uh, in 2015 or so, uh, and those days starting a fund was particularly hard because nobody had ever heard of it. Um, but we did the fund, we grew the fund, it's about a quarter billion dollar fund right now, we've done a number of uh, fairly successful startups. And uh, then I went back into the world of startups, I started a fintech company called Frio, and that's sort of the the company you see over there. Uh, I'm, I'm the chairman right now. I was the co-founder uh, co and CEO until uh, a couple of years ago. And uh, right now I'm back in the ecosystem working with, uh, with, uh, with Nandan on a couple of interesting things. One is Beckin, which I think all of you heard about it yesterday. So I won't repeat uh, what Sujit must have talked about. The second one is about AI. So uh, I've been in the ecosystem for a while. I've been in the Indian ecosystem. Um, my, my wife is German, so I've been married to a German for 25 years. So reasonably familiar with what's going on in Europe, uh, both from a business standpoint as well as uh, sort of a cultural standpoint. And uh, what I'm here to talk about um, is digital innovation ecosystem. So this is digital, so I'm not, uh, I'm not an expert on you know, chemicals or electrical manufacturing and so on and so forth, uh, other people are. But I do know a couple of things about digital ecosystems and that's what I want to talk about. So um, I want to start with uh, the most obvious thing, so, which is uh, unicorns is what the hottest topic is. Unicorn is a company which is worth over a billion dollars. Um, so today the top three unicorns are um, countries which have maximum number of unicorns are US, China, and uh, India is number three. So the question is what makes techno, you know, this ecosystem happen? Why do they happen in some countries uh, and not in others? And what are the ingredients for this? So traditionally, the success factors are, there are a few must-haves. So obviously, you need to have access to large markets, uh, whether it's a local market, uh, like a US or a European market, or access to a global market. So for example, Israel uh, is a very tiny market, but it has access to the US. Or the Indian IT services, the very, uh, Indian IT service is very nascent in India, even now, but it had access to the global markets, and hence Infosys and other companies were able to succeed. The second most important thing is f uh, free flow of capital. Capital needs to come in and capital needs to go out. And in India, the magic did not happen uh, for all these years because it was hard to take, get capital in and take capital out. But when that changed uh, in the last 10 years, magic happened. Uh, the last thing is, of course, talent. You need entrepreneurial talent. You need, uh, if you don't have talent on your own, you need free immigration laws, uh, easy labor laws. And these are, I think, in my view, the most important things. Uh, there are lots of nice to haves. It's good to have research universities like a Stanford or a lot of universities in Germany. Um, but India and China did not, you know, the innovation did not happen around the universities. Now the universities are catching up. Um, IP protection is a nice to have. Uh, US, UK, Singapore have nice uh, IP protection, but India and China don't. And yet we have innovative ecosystems. So these are nice to have. Political stability, of course, is nice to have. But again, Israel is a good case in point where not politically stable, but they have a pretty thriving ecosystem. Um, government policy is a little bit of a love-hate relationship that entrepreneurs have. So Singapore, very active. Uh, India has kind of learned to be more nuanced. Uh, 
uh, Silicon Valley does not like uh, government regulation. So I would say that's kind of like a mixed bag. But uh, what I want to talk about is India. Um, I don't want to go through every piece of data here. But the most important thing to see here is India produced a lot of startups. Most importantly, in the last, um, the last seven years, India produced nearly like 100,000 startups. It was basically about 1,000 startups in, in 2016, and it's 100,000 now. So what happened in the seven years, which we did 100x? Now, when something happens 100 times, uh, you've got to stop and take notice. Right? Something must be different. So um, having been a participant here, um, my view is this. This is what happened in India since 2016. So number one, we had a lot of tailwinds. So number one, we had mobile phones, uh, just took off, cheap Chinese phones. App stores were here, uh, and the internet for us luckily matured at the right time. If it was 10 years earlier, nothing would have happened. But we were there at the right time. Uh, but the most interesting thing, which is unique to India, because internet happened everywhere else in the world. Uh, mobile phones happened in all countries. But on top of the mobile phones, uh, India had a di digital public infrastructure. Uh, and I'll talk about this in a little bit. But digital public infrastructure is the basic rails. So we had the digital identity systems, which I think somebody has to, would have talked about yesterday. Uh, we have a backend protocol. We have the universal payment interface. So these are all open systems. They're free, uh, and they are fully powering the country. So everybody in the country has uh, an Aadhaar, a unique ID. That's 1.4 billion people. So when you have strength of those kind of things, innovations can come cheaply on top of it. And that, for us, was very unique. This has not happened in any other country. Um, along with that, the government opened telecom, and Geo basically used Aadhaar, uh, and they were able to do a million new connections a day, almost, at, at, at the peak. Um, and they lowered the cost of bandwidth, so that everywhere you go in India, you have people using the mobile phone. Uh, and of course, we have a large and growing market that attracted foreign capital. And the free flow of capital I talked about is obviously a very key factor. So the secret ingredients, it's, this is all great. This could have happened everywhere. But what I think we had are hungry entrepreneurs. So in my mind, uh, I've been a hungry entrepreneur many times in my life. Uh, I deal with entrepreneurs all the time. I talk to them every day. Uh, to me, the secret sauce of what we have in India, and it's there in other countries as well, you need hunger. Right? You need people who have fire in the belly, who spend those sleepless nights. And they are the ones who actually make it happen. Everything else is an enabler, honestly. And um, one thing we should uh, realize is that this is what happened in the past. Um, but that's not necessarily the formula for the future. Right? So the past and the future, so people say history repeats itself. In my view, history doesn't repeat itself. It rhymes. Right? So Robin Williams has this famous line uh, in Dead Poet Society, which he, where he makes this line that history doesn't repeat. You know, it rhymes. It's similar, but not exactly the same. So what is going to be different uh, is my view is most, most interesting. Um, one thing is that AI, whether we like it or not, whatever our opinion is on AI, uh, will dramatically change the ecosystem dynamics, right? Um, and the must-haves are still the same. You still need the hunger. Uh, you, if you are smart, you would be using DPI. If today I'm putting together a new ecosystem in any country in Europe or Australia or anywhere else, uh, I would be using digital public infrastructure. Um, I would identify the hungry talent. Entrepreneurs will make it happen. But what you really also need to do is to do AI. Because what AI does is that, and this is the takeaway, is that if you have AI and you have imagination, uh, you can shape the future because the need for having a mass amount of talent actually comes down. That's what AI is doing, right? So you still need talent, but you need like very smart talent. You don't need like a huge army of it. Um, and if you want to create a new ecosystem of the future, this is what I would be saying, and this is the this is the kind of the advice that I give for ecosystem builders around the world when when they ask me this question, like how do I build the next 20 years? It won't be the same as the last 20 years, but it'll be similar. Um, in these ways. So um, that's my takeaway. Thank you very much. Uh, I know uh, I have a very short time limit here, but uh, thanks for your time. Again? Yeah. Thank you, Bala, for that wonderful uh, presentation. So Bala will be here till about lunch. So people could uh, meet with him, connect with him, and see how you can collaborate. There are multiple lines of collaboration. And like I was telling you the story yesterday about the deputy mayor in Paris and everybody sitting up on the table because we 
explained a little bit and bala was in that room <laughs> and he was in that picture and you know then the deputy mayor tweeted that picture and that became quite a sensation within one hour 12000 people were reposting it and so on so thank you bala let's give a big round of applause to bala